people. So the spirit of this <laughs> is you want to be in control. That's it. Whether it be a uh, an engineering report that says, here are your load capacity, this is it, right? Mm -hmm. um, if it's in a form of a drawing, it's in a form of a calculation report or uh, a report, something that says we're in control and we're trying to monitor the, the maximum load that we're up, that we're putting in the racks, but the rack has been analyzed according to the US code. And we do take into account uh, the seismicity of the site that we're at and the types of racks that we have and whatnot. So recently, by the way, I'm just going to a little parenthesis here. So Canada and the US, there's quite an awakening since I would say 2015 to, um, to make these advances in the technology and the ref refining a little bit that type of industry. Racks hold more load than the building they're in, roughly. You know, of course, if you're in a zone where you have like a five feet of snow on the on the roof, yeah, it's getting really, really heavy. But racks are highly optimized structures. There's a lot of redundancy, okay, but not so much in terms of lateral capacity under seismic or impacts, you know, small impacts or um, the out of plumb effects, just so you know, in, in the design codes for buildings, it's been like that for years. Whenever you design something and you put it straight and then you load it, it's never straight anymore. Not mm -hmm. even a building. They yeah. kind of lean somewhat. When you have multiple columns that repeat just like racks, they tend to, you know, all, in the end, it tends to not show up too much, except if your floor has a definite slope, there's some kind of issue with the floor, or maybe like uh, the question that we had for uh, New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's the nature of the warehouse. Yeah. And so whatever you do, it, it kind of leans into it and that forces your beam connectors. So whenever there's an additional, additional force applied to the system, it's already you know, torqued. And you might either damage your beam connectors, the columns themselves, the base blades and whatnot. And the vertical load, once you're not centered anymore and you're like this, gravity just by itself wants to push you away more and more and more, right? So that's, that's what the codes are trying to do. And since 2019, when the Canadian code came out, much more stringent on the seismic analysis that you need to do to, uh, to certify a rack system. And in 2021, the US code also. And now it's not that it was not there. It's always been in the codes. You have to analyze and take care that there's seismic events and there's impact loads You know, when you drop a pallet, not impact load when you hit the rack. Uh, but uh, you have to take all these load configurations into account and um, and now they're just pushing a little bit more. You cannot design a rack just by using a load capacity chart anymore. Can't do that. Even though you're in Toronto and there's not, not a whole lot of seismic forces, uh, you still have these notional forces pushing on the rack and they have to be studied. 